Hydrothermal synthesis includes the various techniques of crystallizing substances from high temperature aqueous solutions at high vapor pressures. Also termed hydrothermal method. The term hydrothermal is of geologic origin. Geochemists and mineralogists have studied hydrothermal phase equilibria since the beginning of the 20th century. George W. Morey at the Carnegie Institution and later, Percy W. Bridgman at Harvard University did much of the work to lay the foundations necessary to containment of reactive media in the temperature and pressure range where most of the hydrothermal work is conducted. Hydrothermal synthesis can be defined as a method of synthesis of single crystals that depends on the solubility of minerals in hot water under high pressure. The crystal growth is performed in an apparatus consisting of a steel pressure vessel called an autoclave, in which a nutrient is supplied along with water. A temperature gradient is maintained between the opposite ends of the growth chamber. At the hotter end the nutrient solute dissolves while at the cooler end it is deposited on a seed crystal, growing the desired crystal. Advantages of the hydrothermal method over other types of crystal growth include the ability to create crystalline phases which are not stable at the melting point. Also, materials which have a high vapor pressure near their melting points can be grown by the hydrothermal method. The method is also particularly suitable for the growth of large good quality crystals while maintaining control over their composition. Disadvantages of the method include the need of expensive autoclaves, and the impossibility of observing the crystal as it grows. The first report of the hydrothermal growth of crystals was by German geologist Karl Emil von Schwadel 1803-1890 in 1845. He grew microscopic quartz crystals in a pressure cooker. In 1848, Robert Bunsen reported growing crystals of barium and strontium carbonate at 200 degrees Celsius and at pressures of 15 atmospheres, using sealed glass tubes and aqueous ammonium chloride as a solvent. In 1849 and 1851, French crystallographer Henri Hurot de Zénarmont (1808–1862) produced crystals of various minerals via hydrothermal synthesis. Later, 1905, Giorgio Spezia (1842–1911) published reports on the growth of macroscopic crystals. He used solutions of sodium silicate, natural crystals as seeds and supply, and a silver-lined vessel. By heating the supply end of his vessel to 320-350 degrees Celsius, and the other end to 165-180 degrees Celsius, he obtained about 15 millimeters of new growth over a 200-day period. Unlike modern practice, the hotter part of the vessel was at the top. A shortage in the electronics industry of natural quartz crystals from Brazil during World War II led to post-war development of a commercial-scale hydrothermal process for culturing quartz crystals, by A.C. Walker and Ernie Bueller in 1950 at Bell Laboratories. Other notable contributions have been made by Nakin 1946, Hale 1948, Brown 1951, and Coleman 1955. A large number of compounds belonging to practically all classes have been synthesized under hydrothermal conditions, elements, simple and complex oxides, tungstates, molybdates, carbonates, silicates, germanates etc. Hydrothermal synthesis is commonly used to grow synthetic quartz, gems and other single crystals with commercial value. Some of the crystals that have been efficiently grown are emeralds, rubies, quartz, Alexandrite and others. The method has proved to be extremely efficient both in the search for new compounds with specific physical properties and in the systematic physical chemical investigation of intricate multi-component systems at elevated temperatures and pressures. The crystallization vessels used are autoclaves. These are usually thick-walled steel cylinders with a hermetic seal which must withstand high temperatures and pressures for prolonged periods of time. Furthermore, the autoclave material must be inert with respect to the solvent. The closure is the most important element of the autoclave. Many designs have been developed for seals, the most famous being the Bridgman seal. In most cases, steel corroding solutions are used in hydrothermal experiments. To prevent corrosion of the internal cavity of the autoclave, 
Protective inserts are generally used. These may have the same shape as the autoclave and fit in the internal cavity, contact type insert, or be a floating type insert which occupies only part of the autoclave interior. Inserts may be made of carbon-free iron, copper, silver, gold, platinum, titanium, glass or quartz, or teflon, depending on the temperature and solution used.